Support comes from... Entergy provides much more than power. We support science and engineering at local schools to build a brighter path to better jobs and help prepare the next generation. Because together, we power life. Entergy. Additional support provided by the Fred B. and Ruth B. Ziegler Foundation and the Ziegler Art Museum located in Jennings City Hall. The museum focuses on emerging Louisiana artists and is an historical and cultural center for Southwest Louisiana. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting with support from viewers like you. Get on this LSU train and ride with us. The flagship's message to state lawmakers. I know of no business in this country today that op can operate like they did in 1991. Bringing gambling laws into the 21st century. The basics are simple. You need a fast horse. How horse breeding is booming in Louisiana. Hi everyone, I'm Andre Morrow. Much more on those stories in a moment, but first on SWI, the state we're in, Governor John Bell Edwards has ordered flags at half-staff to honor Louisiana giant Tom Benson, as he describes him. Since Wednesday, mourners have paid their respects to the Saints and Pelicans owner and car mogul who died last week at the age of 90. Drew Brees and Sean Payton of the Saints and Anthony Davis of the Pelicans are among 17 honorary pallbearers earlier today. Invitation-only funeral services have now taken place at St. Louis Cathedral. Benson's widow, Gail Benson, has assumed control of the state's top two sports franchises. The only two, in fact. Mr. B, rest in peace. Here are other stories now making headlines. How many people like clean air? How many people like clean, safe water? How many people like their crawfish without any oil on them? That's how Green you know, Army leader, see, Lieutenant General Russell Honoré, opened his talk at Monday's uh, Baton Rouge Press Green. Club. Honoré is working to clean up Louisiana and is urging journalists to write and talk more about environmental issues. He's pushing a number of bills at the state capitol, looking to beef up laws on air and water pollution. Honoré says, just ask people with cancer and other ailments like chronic asthma. We got families in St. Rose in one house, three generations with asthma. The grandma, the ma, and the grandchild, 12 years old. All of them with asthma. I can take you and show you. You can go talk to them. And we still don't have a resolution on air monitoring, but we're going to push that bill hard this year. The resettlement for the remaining residents of Ile de Jean Charles in Terrebonne Parish is one step closer. And what the state says is a first-of-its-kind initiative, federal money will pay to move the entire community off the island to an area 40 miles north near Shriver. Price tag, $11.7 million for the 515 acres of land, $48 million to resettle the almost two dozen families. The state says 98% of the island has washed away since the mid-1950s from rising sea level and other environmental causes. An anti-hazing bill, which will be called the Max Groover Act if it becomes law, is advancing to the full house of the legislature. The measure would increase penalties for hazing. It's all part of the aftermath of the death of LSU freshman Max Groover last September. Groover died with a blood alcohol count six times the legal limit. Four people have been charged in the case. Phi Delta Theta fraternity is banned from LSU for 15 years. The call by Senator John Kennedy and a Democrat colleague to have Facebook's CEO appear before Congress has led Mark Zuckerberg to apologize for the data scandal that exposed the profiles of more than 50 million Facebook users. The political consulting firm Cambridge Analytica, which worked for the Trump campaign, harvested private information from all those profiles to allegedly target political messages. Kennedy and Minnesota's Amy Klobuchar say this breach raises concerns about privacy rights and the integrity of American elections. Zuckerberg says he's sorry for Facebook's role, would be open to regulation, and will testify if it helps. The FDA has put popular Lake Charles bakery Anna's Pies on notice for selling baked goods made in a kitchen the FDA says is contaminated with filth. They say an FDA inspection of the company in January turned up serious violations. And the agency says so far, the bakery has failed to clean up its act. 
In other news, Governor Edwards touched on a number of topics during an afternoon news conference Thursday at the state capitol, among them his thoughts on arming teachers at schools with concealed weapons. I for one do not believe it's a good idea uh, to uh, have concealed carry uh, with teachers. I think we need to focus on other school safety measures, uh, principally around school resource officers, uh, making sure that we have an adequate number of those uh, in each school that they are properly trained. LSU right now has its highest enrollment application in history for the next school year and at the same time is facing massive potential cuts from TOPS. To attract the best and brightest TOPS is a scholarship carrot that the flagship at other state universities say they cannot afford not to dangle. LSU President F. King Alexander is with us, back from a recent statewide tour called LSU 2025 Challenge Accepted. You talk about LSU's role in accepting uh, the challenges of the budget, challenges in the state, challenges nationwide. That's a lot of challenges to take on. Well, it's, it's what a flagship should do. And we're one of the few universities in the country that are considered land grant, sea grant, space grant universities. And if LSU isn't tackling the, the state budget problems, health problems, poverty problems, agricultural problems, then who's going to do it? Because we're more equipped and we have the best faculty that, we, that we've brought to Louisiana from around the world to, and students from around the world to take on these challenges. And, and we just want the state legislature just to give us a stable budget so we can, we can help the state address all these issues. You've had that for a year, a one-year mm -hmm. tops reprieve, I could say, um, but you're facing massive cuts potentially again. And how are you addressing this? So right now, it, it, it's amazing with a stable budget that that the governor actually helped us acquire this past year. The, the, the budget was stable to the effect that we'd never received more applications, never had more admits that are qualified admits for our university from basically every state in the United We're 99% from California and 140% from New York. We're 10% up in Louisiana. We just want the state to give us a stable budget so we could tell parents and students, look, you got a great university right here. Just stay at home and, and build our economy. Let's build the economy together. Yeah, as they do in football, Alabama has made a habit of dipping into the state to try to attract students uh, with uh, better financial footing. And the University of Alabama enrollment has gone up to 38,000. They were at one time a much smaller school than LSU, but now much larger. Uh, what would be your dream if TOPS worked out uh, and if these enrollment numbers could translate into uh, actual students, what would be a, a great number to have on campus, so, so, undergraduate and, and so postgraduate? At, uh, on, on the main campus, we're about 30,000. Uh, System-wide, we're about 45,000. Um, could you do 35 on the main we campus? We could be 35 on the main campus, and we could do that, and, and we need to boost our out-of-state student population to help offset, to help also increase the support for our in-state students, since we're not getting the support that we need for our in-state students. So that we're not sacrificing in-state kids for out-of-state students. We're actually using out-of-state students who are coming to our campus because they want to be a part of LSU right. to help to help subsidize what we do as a university and all the great things that we do for all of our students. You have the risk of losing students, the best and brightest, but also faculty when all this is happening. And, and to address that sort of continuously, um, well, it puts a cloud over the university that you could do without. So two years ago, we lost a lot of assistant professors when the budget was so uncertain. This past year, with a stable budget, we were able to have the largest new faculty cohort that we've had in five years. 133 new faculty that came to us from Harvard, Yale, from Wisconsin, Michigan, Berkeley, University of Washington, UCLA. They came to us, which means our brand, LSU's brand, is still very strong, both nationally and internationally. We had faculty from Oxford and Sorbonne and Paris that came to us. So we actually have a very strong name that we need to take advantage of as a, as a university, but as a state, to bring the most talented faculty, staff, and students to our state and to pull them away from those other economies that we compete with. 
One of the big things that is happening at LSU is, is the foundation, uh, they call it a transformational uh, fundraising campaign. And it would be if you were able to raise one and a half billion dollars, you say is the number now. Uh, what are, what's the progress of that and, and when will the big announcement come with that? So we're making great progress in our quiet phase of the capital campaign. And uh, the last capital campaign we had was ended in 2011 and we kind of turned the lights off. We should have kept everything running at full steam ahead. We're now up to full steam as we're raising funds. So we're hoping to be able to announce within the year that, that we're moving towards a one and a half billion dollar campaign. And uh, our numbers are looking very positive because we've gotten some very transformational gifts. And we, we're, gonna, we're moving into the, the, the current day of higher education, which is you gotta raise as much as you can from the talented people that you've graduated. And historically, LSU has lagged behind in fundraising abilities and, and actually getting out and doing it from other universities. Exactly, so three years ago, in terms of alumni giving, we were last in the Southeastern Conference, last. and we were 14th among percentage of alumni who gave. We're now seventh. So we're tied for seventh, we're gaining ground, we're making That's up. That's good movement. We're, it's great movement <laughs> in a couple years, just in a couple years. And what it shows is that we have great loyalty, we have great capacity that, that our alums, our starting salaries are among the best in the United States. They're tied with Chapel Hill and Ohio State. Um, our starting mid-career earnings are among the best in the United States. And we have a lot of loyal alums and a lot of loyal friends to LSU. And we just want them to support the students of the next generation, which is what we're asking them to do. You know, campus infrastructure, if you drive down Nicholson, you can see that so much is happening with the Gateway Project. Um, all the old Mary student apartments are long gone, and this whole new complex has uh, emerged and will soon open. Well, thankfully, those old Mary School. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> um, they were pretty run down. Yeah, they were. Um, there are 1,600 new apartment complexes going up across Nicholson. Uh, that gives us the opportunity to require freshmen, which we are one of the few SEC schools that didn't require freshmen to live on campus, which freshmen who live on campus retain better, stay better, graduate more. And we want them on campus to take advantage of all the opportunities. So those 1,600 new apartments is the second largest campus of uh, residential life project in the United States. It will also have a grocery store and stores right there on campus. Yes, yeah, so you talk about residential life. You've got everything right there at your. Feet. You don't need to leave campus, and yeah. we don't want. What you want? That's, that's, exactly that's exactly what you want. What you want. Right? Exactly, yeah. and it is impressive, and that has to, that has to be something that. Uh, attracts people when they come and look for the first time. And what is this right now? It's impressive. It, it does, and at the same time, I'll point out that it's not, it's not using a dime of state funds to do it. I mean, this is, this is the university being entrepreneurial in, in how, we, uh, how we approach our expansion and how we approach the modernization of campus. And we just want the state to give us a stable budget and quit, quit kicking our, kicking our, holding us hostage every time we, we go into the legislative session. There are other capital projects that we could talk about. We'll, we'll get to the next time, like the library and some other things like mm -hmm. that. If you were standing before the legislature at this moment, what is the one sentence you would tell them? I'd say get on this LSU train and ride with us and just kind of get off the tracks because we're going forward and we're, we've never had more applicants and we've never had better faculty come to our university and let us do what we're supposed to do. Stable budget, let us do what we're supposed to do. Fund tops, fund our university, and just, we're not asking for anything, we're just asking for sta stability. When you have momentum, it would be a shame to derail it. Exactly, All right. exactly. Thank, thank you. you so much thank for being you. here. Thank you, appreciate it. Yep. Thank you very much. You know, gambling is one of the big ticket items the legislature is looking at this session, and some big changes could be on the horizon. LPB's Kelly Spires has been studying this and has more on it. Kelly? That's right. Casinos, which by law have to be on water except for Harrah's in New Orleans, could move to land. Racetracks could see more room for slot machines. There are over 30 bills backed by various interests. In the 90s, it was decided that gaming would be cornered off to riverboats, though they then pushed to tie up to shore because river travel can be dangerous, not to mention decreased profits. But now the time may be right for gambling interests to find an agreement that's even more advantageous to them. For one, the state's in a budget crunch, and Senator Ronnie Johns, who is carrying some of the bills for the industry, says they could help fix it. As I look at our state budget today, gaming revenue makes up $900 million of our, of our budget. 
it, it's it's not a secondary business in this in this state anymore. It's an important business. Uh, they pay a lot of taxes. The $900 million figure is made up of different kinds of gaming, including the lottery as well as video poker. For comparison, oil and gas severance taxes contributed about $580 million. Gambling profits are taxed at 21%, higher than other states, but competition in the industry is limited. Only 15 riverboats are allowed to operate. John's major bill, Senate Bill 316, was vetted by a committee on Tuesday. It would allow these riverboat casinos, like the Bell or Hollywood on the Mississippi in Baton Rouge, to move 1,200 feet inland from their current berths. Anyone who says that this bill expands gaming needs to go back and read it. They need to really look at the issues in this bill does not expand gaming. In the 90s, casinos were limited to 30,000 square feet of gambling space. Another major change in John's bill would change that requirement to 2,365 gaming spaces. That's gonna be defined, as you'll see in the bill, of where the machine is, that would be a gaming space, where the stool is, or the chair, or whatever, that's a gaming space. Um, however, you may have a crap table uh, which the table itself may be a gaming space, but the number of people who stand around that table uh, would be have defined gaming spaces also. John's bill comes from a legislative task force report that studied gaming in Louisiana. It modernizes a, uh, a uh, uh, an industry that uh, has not had hardly any changes since 1991. I know of no business I know of no business in this country today that op can operate like they did in 1991. Senator Karen Carter-Peterson was one of the lone objectors to Tuesday's bills. Three Shreveport casinos have fallen short of their self-imposed goals to hire a certain percentage of minorities. In every one of our communities, there are thriving, successful vendors that can support your agency, your, your entities, member entities. She said Harrah's in New Orleans is doing it right. When you have a city like New Orleans, which is everybody knows the makeup of New Orleans and what the demographics are, and then you have a state, and everybody knows the makeup of our state. Everybody should just have a fair shot, right? A group of pastors from Tangibaho said Tuesday that tax revenue isn't enough to pay for the social ills caused by gambling. Pastor Lewis Husser leads Crossgate Church in Robert. Where do those people go to stay under a roof to put groceries in front of their children. The problem is they go to the churches. I have sat in this office for 26 years at my church, and if you could hear the stories of the people whose lives have been wrecked, let the boat stay on the water, because if they continue to ask and get, this is an industry that is driven by greed, and greed is never satisfied. Other bills would change the square feet of gaming space regulation to number of positions for slot areas at racetracks. Another would help truck stop video poker establishments by changing the amount of fuel they have to sell per poker machine. The measures still have a long way to go before they get final approval on the governor's desk. Some could meet more opposition in the full house where members are more conservative in line with family values groups. In the last 20 years, the three biggest events in horse racing, the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness, and the Belmont Stakes, have been won by more times by Louisiana jockeys than jockeys from any other state. For a state that loves its sports, though, we certainly fall short in celebrating our horse racing champions. Kelly's here with more on this. That's right, Andre, and it's not just jockeying that Louisiana is known for. The horse breeding business is a billion dollar industry that generates nearly $75 million in tax revenue for state coffers, and it employs over 13,000 workers. The state's biggest race, the Louisiana Derby, is coming up this weekend. So we thought we'd learn a little something more about the industry before we placed our bets. That's part of the beauty of the, of the business and the industry is it's, there are so, so many variables and, and it's really pretty complex. The basics are simple, you need a fast horse. 
Val Morel calls horse racing a thinking man's game. There are stats to analyze, pedigrees to examine, odds to consider. Morel and his family run the state's premier thoroughbred farm, Clear Creek Stud in Folsom, Louisiana. You never know where a runner's going to come from. There's numbers, and I don't like to say it's luck. And when everything comes together in some, in some situations, the individual's successful and they haven't spent a gazillion dollars to get there, but they made it. If you're new to horse racing, you might need a translator to help you out. Warren Harang is a man who knows. He is president of the Louisiana Thoroughbred Breeders Association. There are at least six different words for what a layperson might refer to as a horse. When a boy horse is born, it's called a colt until it's five years old, then it's a horse. When it's retired to breeding, then it's a stallion. A female is a filly until she's five years old. That's considered a mare after five. And on the racetrack, she's identified as a filly until she's five. And then normally when you breed a mare or a female, she becomes a brood mare when she's in foal. You might know what a horseshoe is, but have you ever heard of a farrier? Farrier is a, is a person who is uh, very talented and he trims horses' feet and he, and he shoes horses. And that is a, that is a great art because there are no two horses the same. And last time I checked, there are four feet on each horse. And very seldom do you have two of the same on all four feet. So they have to look at that, evaluate, and trim and shoe accordingly. It's a completely different language in the horse business. It's just like it is in the oil and gas business or probably the sugar cane business or anything else you want to get involved in that, that you and I are not familiar with on a daily basis. Tom Early is retired from a 38-year career with the association. Another word to know, paramutual. Paramutual track is, a, is a basically a track where people are actually betting against each other. Uh, and and in, it, the simplest way to describe it is all of the money bet on the losers is divided up among the winners. So that you're really not betting against the track, you're betting against your, uh, your fellow bettors. There are four paramutual racetracks in Louisiana. The Fairgrounds in New Orleans. Delta Downs in Vinton, uh, Louisiana Downs in Shreveport, and Evangeline. On racing days, there's at least three Louisiana bred races offered. Your horse has to be born fouled in Louisiana, and the mare, the mama horse, has to live in Louisiana and can only be bred with an out-of-state horse every other year. And one of Louisiana's own is racing with the cream of the crop this year. Uh, give me a minute is running in Louisiana Derby, and, and he's run in grade one company uh, in other states, and he's been a very nice horse. And hopefully that he does well in Louisiana Derby. Give Me a Minute is by, fathered by, the most famous living Louisiana horse, Star Guitar. He lives at Clear Creek Stud, and the bar at the fairgrounds is named after him. Our final term sounds bad, but is actually pretty exciting. Breaking a maiden. Winning your first race and you're a maiden until you win that first race, no matter how old you are. Just as racing season is getting geared up with qualifying events that earn horses points on the road to the Kentucky Derby, breeders are in their busy season as well. We've got 65 foals on the ground at this point. We have about 65 more to go. And during the same period that uh, you're full, and you're also breeding mares to get them back in full. Breeders are looking for the magic combination of speed and stamina. There's what they call speed horses. Generally, uh, they're considered ones that are six furlong sprinters like. And then there's horses that are uh, distance horses that they're going to run a, at least a mile or uh, preferably the classic distances like, like the Derby and such of a mile and a quarter or better. And Utopia is, is to have the one with speed that will carry it those distances, but that's, that's not easy to find. Harang, Early, and Morell agreed they're all in the business because they have a passion for the animals. The best way to understand that feeling if you're new to horses? A good way to do that, I think, is to go to the races. Now, other than Give Me a Minute, there are two other horses with home state ties this weekend in the Louisiana Derby. 
Lone Sailor is owned by the Benson family, and he's trained by New Orleans native Tom Amos. The Preakness winning brother jockey duo from Maurice, Louisiana, Keith and Ken DeZormo, bring the favorite, my boy Jack. And with Give Me a Minute, all three of those horses are strong closers, meaning they're known to speed up in the last part of the race. So we can, it's a little bit of a long <laughs> shot, but maybe we can cross our fingers for a home state trifecta. And Kelly, that story is the perfect <laughs> blue book information on horse racing. Fascinating. Thank you. And, you know, other than the Derby, other races Saturday include the Crescent City Derby and Oaks. Those are both races that showcase Louisiana bred horses. Kelly, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Saturday, March 24th in Washington, hundreds of Louisiana students will join many hundreds of thousands nationwide for the March for Our Lives in the nation's capital. There are sister marches planned in cities across the country. This month, Louisiana Public Square explores making schools safe in the aftermath of last month's deadly shooting in Parkland, Florida, and a shooting this week at a school in Maryland. The show will examine proposed state and federal legislation and restrict gun sales and arm school personnel. We will also look at the role of school psychologists and resource officers to keep students safe. The Bossier School System already has school resource officers, or SROs, in every one of its 34 public schools. The officers are sheriff's deputies who, whose full-time job is the security of their assigned school. These students will tell the SRO something that they won't even tell their parents, they won't tell um, their, their other mentors, which would be their teachers, their coaches, stuff like that. So it's a, it's a very, very big tool for us as law enforcement and to, to help protect these children every day is to have those relationships. They come and tell us things such as a possible weapon being on campus or things that they know that would hurt their student environment. So they come and tell us that and they feel confident in those relationships and when we build those relationships, it, it kind of instills confidence in those children. They can come to us. Making Schools Safe will air Wednesday night, March 28th at 7 o'clock on LPB and in New Orleans on WLAE. Visit lpb.org slash public square for more information. And that is our show this week, everyone. Thanks so much for being with us. I'm Andre Morrow. For everyone at Louisiana Public Broadcasting, have a great week. And remember, that's the state we're in. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter and visit lpb.org where you can view more stories and leave us a comment. This program is available on DVD. Support comes from... Entergy provides much more than power. We support science and engineering at local schools to build a brighter path to better jobs and help prepare the next generation. Because together, we power life. Entergy. Additional support provided by the Fred B. and Ruth B. Ziegler Foundation and the Ziegler Art Museum located in Jennings City Hall. The museum focuses on emerging Louisiana artists and is an historical and cultural center for Southwest Louisiana. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting with support from viewers like you.